Hey y'all. It is a Chelsea of Knitting Tipsy and uh, here is the first vlog of 2023. That is insane to me that we're in 2023. Many of us are still processing 2020 so cheers to us. Um, I have been trying to think of some different things that I want to do here in my little YouTube space on the internet. And I want to continue doing um, like a day in my life vlogs. I think those are really fun because I don't know, I feel like my life is sometimes a really, really damn good time. So <laughs> I'm going to continue doing those um, and continue doing design diaries. I want y'all to see like my process and the things I'm creating and the ups and downs. There are often a lot of downs in designing. Um, but the ups are great too. So they're, they really make the whole process worthwhile. But, um, I don't spend just all my time designing. Um, I do a lot of testing and I also do a lot of selfish making. Um, I know a lot of people don't like that term, but I think it's a fun term to reclaim. Um, there's nothing wrong with being selfish sometimes. Um, putting yourself first, you can't pour from an empty vessel. Um, doing things just for you and making time for ourselves, I think is really important. So I say selfish makes are a great thing. I like the term and I try to always have at least one selfish make going on. Um, and I thought, why don't I review those patterns? I think there are so many amazing patterns out there and I get caught up in the cycle of seeing new things and adding them to my queue. And then my queue just gets bigger and bigger, but I'm constantly you know, designing for myself or testing patterns. So I really want to make an effort this year in 2023 to work through my existing queue while also making and designing new things. So this is going to be my pattern review, but I feel like it's more just, I'm really fucking excited. I want to show off my finished object. So maybe it's just like a show and tell, show and tell with knitting tipsy. I could, I could get on board with that. So a show and tell of my, um, newest faux. And <laughs> that would be what I have on. It's a little hard to see. I'm going to, you know, what? I'm going to pop in a picture here of the Cinnabar. Um, but yes, it is the Cinnabar sweater by Maven Crafted. Let me you can like see that I have it on. <laughs> this is me. I also promise to find um, ways to get better at the, the actual filming of these vlogs eventually. So that hopefully when you're watching later videos, you're like, oh my gosh, you got so much better. Let's hope. Cause right now I feel like I suck, but I'm not letting it stop me. We're gonna film on anyways. Back to the Cinnabar. Okay, so. The Cinnabar Sweater by Maven Crafted. Rachel of Maven Crafted. Rachel, if you ever watch this, I adore this pattern. It had been in my queue for such a long time, as I said, but um, around October, I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna make myself a sweater. Florida Girl does not make herself a ton of sweaters, but we do get some chilly weather, so a light, chilly weather, that was. <laughs> so a lightweight sweater. A lightweight sweater is very, it, it makes a very good add-on to my handmade wardrobe because I do get cold in under 70 degree weather. My blood has thinned, but that's okay. Um, so this Cinnabar, I've been wanting to make it for a really long time and the yarn that I have used here, this is from The Little Wolf Knits. Everything Brie dyes makes me happy. Um, her colorways are absolutely amazing. But she sent me this beautiful purple um, witch's brew and possibly my favorite color of all time, this chartreuse oogie boogie. It's called oogie boogie. It shows up a little more yellow on camera. I feel like in person it's more green. But she sent this to me um, as part of a collab for my last pattern, the Sexy Gone Cardi. I'll put that right here too. 
I was going to make one of the samples in this gorgeous, these colorways, but life happened and Brie was so sweet. I was freaking out. I felt so terrible. And she's like, that's okay. Just use it for another project. Um, and I decided that it was going to be my cinnabar. So the cinnabar does not have instructions for the fade. I did the fade on my own. I was really proud of myself. That was a skill that I learned. Um, I actually took the fade instructions. I know you, I could have looked up how to do it. <laughs> I kind of did. Um, I half-assed it, my research. Sometimes they do that. But I took it from another pattern, um, the Faded Morning Shawl by the Chesapeake Needle. Um, I really liked how she did her fades and it was also um, a shawl that fades just from one to the second color and then back and forth. So um, those were kind of the instructions like how many rows to do in each color that I used for the body here and for the sleeves. I'll talk about the, um, the fade experience here in a little bit, but I just want to give some basics about the sweater. It is a top down raglan. It is a size inclusive design. I think finished garment measurements were 36 inches to 64 inches um, and measured at the bust. Um, it's meant to be worn with approximately four inches, I think of positive ease. So size inclusive up to 60 inches and it was really well written. I had no issues with any aspect of the pattern itself. And I loved how many um, opportunities you had to kind of customize the sweater yourself. Um, one of those being the sleeves. I'm gonna pop another picture in here. <laughs> My sleeves are a little long. They're a little long. I may still frog them, but um, honestly, I feel like it gives it like kind of a fun witchy look. I haven't eaten though with this sweater and I feel like if my sleeves are constantly falling into my food or my cocktail, I feel like that'll be a problem. So I might wear it once or twice and then frog the sleeves if need be, but I really do like that long kind of length. It feels very witchy. Um, so that is an option. You can do these beautiful bell sleeves or you can do a fitted sleeve. Um, the other option is you can create a cropped sweater or a full length sweater and you have the option to do some body shaping. Um, I'm surprised and proud that I didn't go with the crop sweater. Um, if you see me on Instagram, most of the things I wear are cropped or a bikini. Um, that's just how, that's the style I feel comfortable in but it really made me look at my closet and I don't have a ton of like long comfy sweaters that I would wear with leggings or with a pair of jeans or you know something that I could tuck in. Everything that I have is really cropped. So I was intending to make this a crop sweater and at the last minute I changed my mind. I was like, no, I want a full length sweater so that if I go home to Pittsburgh and it's cold or if I go on a cold vacation, um, I have something that's going to cover my tummy and keep it warm. So um, I went with the full length non fitted option. And the only mod that I, I made to this sweater, um, the sleeves, the instruction is to use an I cord bind off, which I love. I think it mirrors the pearl rose really nice that it has in the pattern. And it's just, I don't know, that little curl at the end feels really lovely. Um, but the sweater itself in all versions ended with some ribbing, just like you have here at the neckline. But I decided I actually wanted it to match my sleeves and not the neckline. So I did, and I, I'm trying not to like flash you. <laughs> then it wouldn't be YouTube appropriate. But I, <laughs> I did an I-cord bind off as well. So that's really the only modification I made to this. Um, I used approximately 1200 yards and I made the size four. So this has, I think mine actually has like three inches cause my gauge was just a smidgeroony off. Um, but yeah, and if it's, if it's lovely, I love the fit, I adore it. So 
doing the fade, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen, um, I originally finished this in time for Christmas, in plenty of time. But, here I'll add. I don't know if I can add a video. If I can add a video, I'm going to now. My perfectionist brain is not letting it go that this, the fade should have started one to two of these little repeats earlier. If I can't, I'm not. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I had, I thought that I had lined up where the fade in the sleeves and in the waist would be, but I was off by about three pattern repeats, um, pretty, pretty significantly actually. And I did not like, it looked like I had a dropped waist almost because of where this hit. And it really bugged me that the fade didn't line up between the body and the sleeves. So many people told me like, oh, it looks great. Like, just let it go. And it was, it was still beautiful. But um, sometimes I challenge my perfectionist brain because not everything has to be perfect, especially handmade. And sometimes I acknowledge when it's right <laughs> and when it's really gonna bother me. And I did, I ripped out the whole thing back until I got to where I wanted the fade to hit. And I'm so glad that I did. Like, isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. I'm so much happier with it now. So if you ever have that decision to make, like, oh, do I frog all of that work? If you know you'll be happier, I'm always okay with frogging. As my friend Bree, the little of knits tells me, it just means more knitting time. And I adored working on this. There was actually a point that I was like, I put it away because I was afraid, you know, I, I didn't want this to end. I was really fine. This was the project I kept grabbing when shit was hitting the fan or whenever I was up, like a design didn't work. This just brought me so much joy and I was getting close to finishing. And I'm like, I don't want it to end. And Brie made a really good point. She said, why don't you finish it and then find another design that brings you that much joy? Like you don't have to put something away just because you're scared to finish it. We can continue having happy, joyful, selfish makes in our lives. It's not like a one and done and now I have to go back to, and not that designing, oh boy, that sounded bad, didn't it? <laughs> it's not that designing doesn't bring me joy, but um, it does present its challenges and this is just pure happiness. So I think it's really important, I know I said this before, but to have a joyful, selfish um, project, and it doesn't even have to be knitting and crochet, sometimes that for me is a book, is a book I'm really enjoying. Um, something like that guilty prep pleasure, but I don't feel guilty for it. None of us should feel guilty about it. So I'll keep using selfish. A selfish project, selfish time, me time to have to work on something. So that was this sweater for me. And I'm just, I'm delighted by it. I love the squishy texture. It's light enough that um, again, I can wear it here in Florida. We do get some chilly days in January, although the weather completely went batshit at Christmas and it was a real feel of like 29 degrees, I think on Christmas day at the beach in Sarasota. Um, it was even colder here in Orlando, but we had traveled for Christmas. Um, so on those days, bet your ass, this would be <laughs> really freaking perfect to have on. But I'd say normally like our chilliest Florida temperatures are like high 30s, low 40s, very briefly, like I'm talking maybe a week of that. Um, and then we do get in the winter time, January, February, a lot of 50s and 60 degree weather as like sometimes the highs, but often the lows. Um, I consider Florida winter to be like high 60s, low 70s. That's the perfect time. Once we get out of that like mid-January to mid-February, the rest of our winter, like before and after, is usually like low 70s, high 60s. And that's perfect, perfect for winter time, in my opinion. But this um, sweater is super comfortable and I feel like I could wear that even in the, the high 60s. Maybe not baking out in the sun, but it'll be great for um, cool beach mornings too. I have a lime green thong bikini. I can totally see this being paired with, so. Um, yeah, it's a really good Florida make. Um, I think it's good for all climates. 
And if you are still on the fence about making yourself a cinnabar, go check out the hashtag. I love how, seeing how people styled their cinnabar and the different, um, you know, options that they chose, like sleeves or body length or fitted or not fitted. It really does make it look like a completely different sweater, in my opinion, which is so cool. Um, and what brings me a lot of joy is seeing it on so many different bodies and seeing how confident people feel in it and how like it just it brings out that like inner sexy goddess badass. Um, so there are, it is a size inclusive pattern. I said this before, but if you want to see it like on your body type, check out the hashtag. Lots of people have made this. It's a really, really popular design and for good reason. So the Cinnabar, go get it. <laughs> And get yourself some of Breeze yarn too. Okay, so that is going to be the end, I guess, of this um, show and tell, my first video here. But I do plan on trying to post every Friday here on YouTube. So if you enjoy my crazy, um, spontaneous <laughs> chats on different things, please make sure that you subscribe. Um, I will have a daily life vlog coming here soon. It's my birthday next weekend. So I'm going to film um, all of the shenanigans that go on on my birthday. And I do have a new episode of the Design Diaries, both for a spontaneous uh, birthday top I've decided to create, as well as my current design, the Palm Beach Pullover. I'm hoping to have more to show y'all whenever that comes out in about two weeks. So thanks again so much for watching. Um, please share this if you liked it and see y'all next time.